Hi, and welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today I am standing in almost a monoculture of Nandina domesticia, commonly known as heavenly bamboo, but it's not so heavenly for our native ecosystems because this is an invasive plant. So this is a great, a great example of a serious invasive in the Southeast. Nandina uh, forms monocultures in the understories of our woodlands like this one, and it shades out and eventually kills all of the herbaceous plants that are in the understory and all, all the little wildflowers and grasses and sedges that feed all of our wildlife. And it even shades out the tree seedlings so the forests are not able to reproduce, to regenerate. So it eventually will end up being a complete monoculture of Nandina or some other invasives as well that might be competing with them. These plants are taking up resources, water, nutrients, sunlight, space, and they're not passing the energy that they're taking back up the food chain because they don't have those functional relationships with other species. So not only is it harmful because it's not passing energy up the food chain, it's taking all of the resources, the water, the nutrients, the space, um, the sunlight, and it's not passing that energy up the food chain. But also in particular, this species, the berries actually contain cyanide. And so birds that gorge on berries like cedar waxwings, um, it actually kills them. And birds that eat just a few berries it probably has a very not negligible effect on, on their health. It's probably harmful to them as well. And the, when the birds eat the berries and then they poof them out somewhere else, then they're spreading the invasive species. So here's another invasive plant. This is Ardesia crenata, commonly known as coral ardesia or coral berry. And it does the same thing as the invasive Nandina does shades out all of the understory and it creates a monoculture and then it prevents the uh, trees from replacing themselves and regenerating. So some people might think that if a plant's been here for 200 years, you know, now it has, it can fill those roles, right? Now it's a functioning member of the ecosystem. Um, or even if you see some holes in a leaf or you see bees on, on the flowers, you might think, oh, it's providing, you know, it's providing services, right? But in reality, you know, even 500 years is such a tiny drop in evolutionary time. It's not enough time for those relationships to be built. And so these plants, again, they're taking up space, water, nutrients, light, Etc. but they're not feeding the rest of the food chain. And what happens when that occurs? Ecosystems collapse. And that has a serious effect on us because as we've learned, we are completely reliant on the goods and services that functioning ecosystems provide for us. When you're picking plants for your yards and gardens, it's always best to pick native plants because we know that they're, they are performing the functions that are ecosystems require, that we require for them to continue filling. So your yard is not just your yard, it's a part of a greater whole that has a role to fill. And we want our yards to continue to fill those roles to provide those services. So thanks for joining us today. Next week, we will begin going over some of the actions we can take as humans to alleviate the problems caused by invasive species.